But they do know what's happening. Uh, Kronos uh, might be in trouble here. Alquang rotating over. Time stop is down. He's going to take a lot of damage here. The Squall is actually going to miss. But now, I mean, they're going to secure that guarantee. Actually, no, yeah, it looks like Zalia was able to pick that up. Uh, is not able to actually physically pick the buff up. But surprisingly, Toxic Q has not taken a lot of damage despite getting stuck in that tornado. And now both members of Mortality are about to take some serious damage. Ependary's caught out. Nowhere to go there. That will be the first blood. SK somehow is leading this game with this strategy. Very, very aggressive lineup. Of course, Bakasura were able to secure those buffs. As you mentioned, that E-Minion is so powerful from, you know, jungling to counter jungling. It's so easy to pick that up. Uh, so, you know, with the, you know, the combination of Kronos, who's going to be sitting in there, and maybe that's their strategy. Maybe they, you know, group up together and then they're really trying to invade and steal buffs away and stop the enemy jungler. And, you know, Bakasura falls back to that side lane to farm, 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 get that farm up. And Kronos kind of rolls around and trying to pick up as much as he can, uh, you know, grouping up with whoever's available to pick that up. I mean, that, that's a great kill there on that Thor, Isis rotated perfectly, great communication, and this is kind of SK, I mean, ig ignoring the picks and the, and the strangeness of this match, this is the kind of SK gaming we expect to see last week, which we actually did not see, uh, you know, just the kind of coordination, the, the rotations, the sharp play that we'd see from a top tier team like SK Gaming, who previously had a dynasty in the EU tournament series, uh, we're seeing them coming out, a great charge between the Bacchus and the minions, picking up Apollo there in the left lane, nothing really happens there, I was just like, so excited to see that kind of you know small play come out and it takes such you know patience and practice to be able to pull put charges like that off in between uh, minions and, and players there so a good pull from the Sobek nothing really gonna happen here in the left side of the lane uh, we see Boxer pushing back the Al Kwong on the right side Kronos coming from a gank here in the left lane to see how well this Kronos jungle works there's a dash in Apollo level 5 Belch the God's gonna come out Tail Whip gonna interrupt a great play there Kronos going after the Neath actually doing very minimal damage Apollo up there can he force her away from the tower no he's gonna do a little bit of damage to her and this is the Kronos gang looks like it's not very effective right now. In fact, they couldn't really see well, anybody. To be fair, he just blatantly missed the time stop. I mean, it wasn't even where, like, the Neath dodge. He just threw it in the complete wrong direction. If he had landed it, that might have been a kill. Actually, it more than likely would have been a kill. But now, super greedy Sobek, level 4, jumping in here in the wrong spot. Sun Touch, also level 4. Adam Mana could be in a lot of trouble here. The bomb's raining down, and that will be a pickoff on the Sun Touch, who had no business belly flopping, but he belly flopped a little bit too hard, got caught. Neath ult coming out, a raw bomb dropping down as well, and now Sayo, who's still behind Captain Twig, is trying Trying to push into the jungle here. Uh, well, actually, no. It looks like he's looking for an opportunity to send the spirit ball out. It's not going to hit anything. And now um, that experience won't even be wasted as Sobek rotates over and uses Hand of the Gods to clear it out. Yeah, I think, you know, it, it goes to show when you have rotations like this as far as roles, I mean, Sun Touch not normally a support player. Uh, generally, I think a very experienced support player would be very cautious in that situation. Uh, Sun Touch trying to jump in and trying to force this, uh, the envelope. And I think he's, you know, very used to playing a carry character where you can definitely, you know, get very hyper aggressive if there's support there and get lots of kills. He jumps in with a belly flop. No, you know, you no backup, no follow up coming up from SK Gaming. And Bacchus and you, know, Neath actually hit level 5 in the lane while he was doing it. So so the Neath ultimate came and rooted him right in place. Flame wave ultimate from the Agni, and that is the end of Bacchus. So right now we're going to have one and one. Of course, Thor was the first blood for SK Gaming. They got a big lead from that. Uh, in fact, they're still ahead right now. 592 gold and 890 experience overall. But Mortality responds with a quick kill on the Bacchus. We see Thor dropping quite low. Ice is going to rotate over. There's this circle of protection. I'm uh, going to try and steal this buff away. She's going to be peeled off. Bacchus jumping in and dropping the Intoxicate on the Thor. Stun coming out. Apollo dunk. There's a Spirit Ball and a kill on the Sobek as well. SK Gaming is getting kills in the enemy jungle right now despite what happened in the left lane previously and they're starting to take control of this game. A rather disappointing, very slow rotation there from Captain Twig. Just no communication right there. He just took his sweet time trying to get to his teammates. And in that time, it looks like both of his teammates paid for it. Both Sobek and Thor getting grabbed out of position there. Actually, not even out of position. They were in a great position. But Bacchus coming over and just slamming down the jug. Ependary's only level 4 right now compared to Proxy QQ, who is level 8, doubling his level at the 6-minute mark. Ependary has a lot of work to make up. Look at Thor right now. He goes over to do the movement oh, speed wait. buff, and oh, Kronos is already sorry. there. In the mid lane here, Sayo's on his last legs, but a miss bomb. Actually, he doesn't recognize... Bacchus! Oh, Bacchus! Oh, oh so not very quick enough, there. friend. Not quick enough, but Proxy's coming out of the jungle. Will he get the time stop this time? I don't know if he's going to have a chance. The time stop does go out. A rewind's going to go down, which has a very big orb. I don't think I've ever seen that. And then um, 
Of course, uh, Sobek rotating over to keep him static. NQ putting the tornado down, but it looks like Zelia was able to jump out of it, and Proxy will take up that mid camp. Overall, a 1 0 exchange there uh, with uh, unfortunate farming potential, but it looks like Mortality is definitely keeping themselves in the game. We saw Agni kind of jump into the ice, getting a free kill on, uh, uh, getting dropping low on HP. Of course, Nifolta came out, and Baka's not really, uh, you know, paying too much attention again. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if this is speculation or what, but I have to question whether that was just, you know, Sun Touch not being used to being a support tank and, you know, being protective of the players that are around him and, and playing more for himself as he tried to, you know, just tunnel vision in on the Agni, not really pay attention to what's behind him. Uh, that's something that, you know, just the role reversal and, and what really happens from that. Uh, but we did see in the jungle, I mean, look at Thor right now. Thor just hitting level 5. He now picked up his ultimate uh, right here, and it's just, it's so, actually, oh, he's up in the air, he's going to dunk back down, looking for opportunity to dunk the right lane, not going to get it, uh, but you, you see Kronos and Bakasura repeatedly invading the opposite jungle, we see Bacchus, Isis, and Apollo doing the exact same thing, and then really that's what they're trying to do here, Bakasura's side lane is going to jump in, and every time Kronos invades, he's there to get the hand of the gods, or possibly the eat minion, and Thor has been shut down on his uh, minions so very often, that he's sitting at level 5 right now, every time he goes for that movement speed buff when it's off cooldown has respawned as you see box getting jumped on here chronos jumps over and stops him from doing it stun comes out Boss getting jumped on here, see if you can get a double belly flop up. The circle protection gonna pop not in time. The stun does not land from the Chronos. Burst damage on top of Captain Twig. A meteor gonna come out. There's the Neath ultimate. Is it gonna be enough? Isis will pick up the kill there, forcing the Sobek backwards. Pops his ultimate, finishing off. It looks like uh, Bach is there, but Bach is for Thor and Arnie. It's a great trade. And Sobek as well. Three for one trade. Bach has gotta be happy about that. A big pickup for SK Gaming. In the right lane, Zalia jumping in. Uh, looks like he blinked in there, dropped the cripple on top of Alquang, and then just started laying waste. The ultimate goes off and actually hits Zalia, which is why you'll see most of his health is missing. But at the same time, not even most, less than half actually. But at the same time, I mean, there's no looming threat whatsoever. The newly sponsored Mortality is having a lot of trouble with SK's kind of, um, I guess, uh, Disillusion it almost uh, roster here, but I mean th this is what I talked I actually recently posted a giant thread on reddit talking about thinking outside the box You don't have to do things normally You don't have to see what everyone else sees every single time and this is kind of you know what we're talking about Epidary's taking gigantic amounts of damage four wow. hits from Bacchus just dropped that Thor Holy hell does that character do a lot of damage? All it takes is a little bit of a start. Bakasura really only needs a small catalyst in the beginning, as you see Kronos kind of rotating over here in the mid lane. Stun on the uh, ice is taking a little bit of damage here. Kronos coming out. Kronos forcing the envelope here. Charge frame may come out. No tail whip is going to come out, and nothing really going to happen there. But, you know, Bakasura, all he needs is a little bit of a boost in the beginning, and he starts becoming a gigantic snowball. He is such a terrifying character, and you can see why there. I mean, Thor came out, you know, obviously you got to look at the context here. Level 6. Thor uh, versus a level 11 at the time, Bakasura level 12 now, uh, that's a very huge level gap, and that's just going to come down to base damage and, you know, just base points into abilities, uh, getting a little bit more effectiveness there, but I mean, Bakasura just eating, eating the Thor, pun intended, and Thor, who is now still level 6 because of the Kronos invasion, because of the Bakasura invasion, here goes a belly flop, Apollo up into the air, the dunk going to come pretty soon, Ice comes out, Neath ultimate, there's a tectonic grip, forcing Thor backwards, Thor getting shut down so hard, one basic attack, and Ependary is dead again. Sobek being forced back there. A good stun from the Agni. Flame wave is all they need. Not going to land. A little bit just short. But looks like Neath will be able to pick up that kill. Bacchus backing off here. Dropping quite low on HP. Belly flop going to force up Captain Twig. There's a stun. But, uh, the dash not available. But he's actually not in a drunk state. Agni throws out the meteor. Great presence of mind from the Bacchus. Avoiding that meteor there. And there goes a the kill on Agni. And again, we have a three for one exchange. I don't know. NQ once again getting grabbed out by Zelia. I mean, Bakasura, when he's fed, is such a dangerous character, but this far ahead is crazy. And just looking at it right now, he has 1,900 gold in his hand. He could be saving up for the 2,200 mark to pick up a full executioner, at which point he will be basically unkillable, uh, as he will do too much damage for anyone to deal with. Oh, he's with only gone back to base once. Immune. I know, I mean, he's been sitting here forever, <laughs> and he's just destroying things. And the tower, which hasn't really taken too much damage, is about to get absolutely demolished as this extremely powerful box. Actually, we already have a teleport over. Jumping in, we do see NQ, who has already respawned level 11 right now, compared to 14 on Zelia, who walks into the enemy jungle. Hand of the Gods into the Eat is going to pick himself up a blue buff for further sustain so he can continuously grab, but he will be reaching the 2200 mark. I wonder if he's going to go back and just pick up the Executioner. 
he possibly will. That attack speed and strength is going to be so very important for him. Uh, so we're going to see if he decides to go for it. But again, you know, Ooh. with the blue buff initiation, there's a stun. Bach is blinking in. Burst damage for the true strike, and that's going to be enough. The Alcorn ultimate not going to come out there, it looks like. Just did not have the opportunity. Actually, it looks like it did get popped off, but it didn't hit anything as the jump came out from the Bakasura. A little bit, uh, just uh, just the burst damage for Bakasura, plus the blink and the cripple right after. I mean, Bakasura is shortly becoming a very strong character. There's initiation from the Audi. There's a stun. Neath all the circle protection. A little bit of a heal off. Not enough though as ice is followed that's a 4v2 situation Thor is going to go up in the air they're going to wait for the dunk look for the anvil dawn it's going to come down pretty soon uh, there's a CC mini from the Apollo goes up into the air Bog is trying to get out he's going to get collapsed upon the stun comes down and flame wave will be the end of Bacchus as we know it overall it's going to be a two for one exchange if you include the alcohol in the right lane a great rotation from SK Gaming and they're going to go right into a gold three which proxy will spot out will they have some teleports like Bakasura and Apollo neither of them bought teleports they're going to have to walk over here it's all Kronos all day long right now. Look at the damage on Sobek. The first damage. Now an Epidemic. A double kill for Proxy QQ. He's on the Gold Fury. He steals it with the hand of the gods. The rewind comes out. And it's like nothing even happened in the first place. And Agni is forced to dash away in shame as the stun comes over the wall. Proxy QQ in a 4v1 situation gets a double kill and takes the Gold Fury. I mean, this is what I'm saying. I mean, just... Sometimes things might not work for some people, and sometimes things are going to be amazing in other cases. And right now, we are seeing Baka Lane Chronos Jungle, which I don't think any of us would have guessed coming in. But it's it's not only working, it's it's brilliant. Baka Sura has completely controlled Alquang. I mean, being able to just lock him down is insane. And now Zelia, who's super strong, did go back and finish the execution, uh, Executioner and picked up an entire regular blink so out of combat for three seconds will be able to chase down everything he wants every 30 seconds plus increase his movement speed this is incredibly scary right now for mortality who is down nine kills right now and it looks like eight thousand gold along with twelve thousand experience i mean proxy level 15 zalia level 16 smack level 14 sire level 14 and then suntosh on the bottom at level nine a little strange in the level gap there, but he's doing a great job of allowing his team to control and taking the brunt of the damage mid lane right now. Actually, before I could even function, the blink in actually killed NQ in the time it took me to switch from right lane to mid lane. The damage on Baka right I... now is crazy, and at the same time, like, what do you do? Like, he has Sobek and Agni pushed under a tower as just Isis right now. The fear is in their minds, and they have nothing they can do to contest it. I saw the Alquang teleport over the right lane, and then I was just thinking, he's going to defend that. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at the lane, he's already dead. The second he appeared on that tower, Bakasar just went in and gobbled him up for lunch. I did not expect that quick of a kill. In fact, I couldn't even go over to that side lane like you mentioned. In the time it took to rotate, he was already dead. That kind of damage and control from Bakasura is just so much right now. It's got to oh, be daunting. Air. Initiation comes out here on the Thor. And Toxic goes on the ground. Teleport over the wall just in time. Ice go for the Spirit Ball. She can get it. It just barely avoided. Thor goes over the air. It's going to be enough. Wing Gust comes out. Not going to land it in time. Now needs in trouble here. Bakas jumps over the wall. Belch the Gods come out. She's going to or actually backflip away. Apollo goes up into the air. Looking for some kind of initiation here on the audience in the middle lane, the dunk comes out, there's the burst damage, there's the Kronos hit, and that's a dead Agni Sobek, still a little bit late to the party here, and Kronos is just going to rewind the whole thing, and that ultimate is so very great when you're playing an aggressive Kronos, because you can just prevent all kind of pitfalls when you're getting aggressive here, Bacchus are going to take the mid tower as if it never existed in the first place, surrender vote coming out from Mortality, and SK Gaming, there's a kill on the need left lane, another tower goes down, looking at the graphs, they're at 12,000 gold, and we still have a level 9 Thor. Um, so when I said, oh, Dry Bear, I didn't even care about the initiation. I was thinking more of the fact that Bakasura has Vista the Gods. Oh, man. Surrender vote comes a, out here uh, for mortality. A prompt surrender, and I think a very welcomed surrender. Yeah. That kind SK of damage deserved was... that win was, it, it, let's look at the damage numbers here. Player damage, 6,000 from Bakasura. I think that was just on the occasional Thor, but mostly on Al Kwong. Al Kwong taking 6,500. Yes, yeah, so and most of it uh, just came out from the Bakasura. You see Kronos dropping out 8,500 himself. In fact, that's going to be the most, the second most in the whole game. Uh, Captain, we got Audi. Audi always expected to have high numbers of burst damage, uh, you know, with that overall AoE. The rotations were great. I mean, we saw Exotic 3, 1, and 3. Played that quite well. But I think the overall point of this match, and probably the most th the most important thing to focus on, as far as you know, uh, you know what really worked out well for SK Gaming is going to be that Thor. I mean, Kronos and Bakasura 
had the entirety of the right side jungle shut down. When you have a powerful jungler like Bakasura in the solo lane who can wander over and steal buffs and shut down the, the enemy jungler, I mean, Ependary could not go within 10 feet of a buff camp without, you know, Bakasura and Chrono showing up and preventing him from getting it. I mean, they just shut him down. He could not get any levels. He hit level 5 around the 9 to 10 minute mark. That is incredibly slow. He could not get a single inch this match, and they just... They controlled the whole jungle left and right. We saw Bacchus jump over the wall, get a kill on Thor when he's going for the damage buff. I mean, we saw Isis as well as the Apollo and the Bacchus control the left side jungle. They just did not allow Thor to do anything this time around. I mean, overall, SK completely controlled that game and made... Uh, I think made it up for to themselves for what happened last week against Mortality. Um, overall, I mean, we're going to see F SK move on in the bracket. Uh, let me see if we have the next game loaded up just in case. Uh, their next game will be going up against uh, the winner of Six Sigma and Bipolar Method, but it looks as of right now we are waiting. Uh, Wooten Mama, the new team from uh, Mugiwawa and Friends, will be going up against last week's Cinderella Story, Wellex Esports. Uh, they should be going on right now. And then Cognitive right now, uh, our number one seed, is going up against Reason Gaming EU. So there's a lot of really hype matches going on. We'll be starting the semifinals as soon as possible. Uh, we'll take a word with our admins. We'll be back with an update in just a little bit. Uh, Drybear, anything you want to add? Uh, we're still waiting for the other matches to be finished. Uh, so, uh, you know, it looks like it, we, that game ended so quickly, we didn't really expect that kind of performance. Here. The other matches are, are uh, taking quite some time. Uh, so it looks like all the games will be quite good today. I mean, we always have COG up against Reason uh, there in the Stage I. We have Wellox up against Wooten Mama Stage J. We just watched Mortality up against SK in Stage K, where SK took a very, very strong victory there with a Bacchusaurus solo lane. Very surprising with the Chronos Jungle. Six Sigma still facing up against Biopore Math. That match uh, should be finishing up quite soon. Uh, but again, we're waiting for all the results of all these matches. Uh, so we'll cut to a brief break, guys. We'll wait for the next match to get started up. Uh, we'll talk. It looks like we do have a word. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through that. So we'll be back in a few minutes with an update. So when you guys are, uh, when we know something, you guys will know something. So stick around. This is the EU Tournament Series number 21. We're heading to the semifinal rounds next. We have yet to see a semifinal match played. So definitely stick around. Best of one in the semifinals, of course, a best of three in the grand finals. And it's it's going to be a great, uh, you know, series thus far. I mean, obviously, SK Gaming coming out to play today. Uh, we didn't see them perform last week. They actually got knocked out in the preliminaries. Uh, so definitely a lot of good matches coming up. So stick around. We'll be back in a few minutes.